Hey everyone, you're watching AshDev. Welcome to episode two of our car controller tutorial series. Last time, we added the suspension system for our car. Now, we're going to step it up by adding some more features like car acceleration and turning. Let's get started. First, let's switch up the car model. You can choose your own model. Just keep in mind that the car's Z axis should be facing forward and the wheels must be separate from the car's main mesh. Once you've got your model, remove the previous car body and replace it with the new one. Then, reposition the ray points following the same method shown in the earlier part. Now, open the car controller script, and first of all, we will add a ground check function to check if the car is grounded or not. For that, we will create an array of type integer called wheel is grounded. This will tell us how many wheels are on the ground. A value of 1 means it's on the ground, and the value of 0 means it's off the ground. Initialize it to an array of 4 integers, as we have 4 wheels. Next, create a bool called isGrounded. This will store whether the car is on the ground or not, and initialize it to false. Now, some modifications need to be done in the suspension function. Change the for each loop to a for loop. As ray point doesn't exist anymore, it needs to be replaced with ith element of the ray points array. After that, we will set the ith element of wheel is grounded to 1 in the if statement where raycast hits the ground surface and else to 0. Now, for each ray point in ray points array, there's an integer in wheel is grounded array, which will be telling us if that ray point is hitting the ground or not. For example, if the first ray point is hitting the ground, then its related integer in the array will be 1, otherwise it will be 0. Now make a region named car status check and in it make a function ground check. Here, make an integer temp grounded wheels with initialized value at 0. Then create a for loop in which we'll add all the integers in the wheel is grounded array to temp grounded wheels. Then check if temp grounded wheels is greater than 1. In that case, set the bool is grounded to true, otherwise to false. Meaning if more than one wheels are on ground, then the car is on the ground. Now call this function in fixed update. Next, let's add some movement to the car. Create a header named input and under it, add two float variables, move input and steer input. These variables will hold the player's inputs. Next, define a region called input handling. Within this region, create a function named get player input. In this function, assign move input to input.getAxis vertical and steer input to input.getAxis horizontal. Pay close attention to the spelling of these commands to ensure everything works as expected, and then call this an update function. Now, create a header car settings. Create three floats acceleration set to 25, deceleration set to 10, and max speed set to 100. Then create a vector 3 current car local velocity. This will be storing the car's velocity in its local axis. Next, make another float car velocity ratio. This will be used to store how much speed the car has achieved regarding its maximum speed. Now, under car status check region, create a function calculate car velocity. Inside it, set local car velocity to transform dot inverse transform direction and pass rb dot velocity. This will now return the car's velocity in its local axis. Next, set car velocity ratio as the magnitude of the local car velocity divided by its maximum speed. This will now return a number between 0 and 1, where 0 is a non-moving car and 1 is a moving car at the maximum speed. Call this function in the fixed update function. Next, create a transform variable named acceleration point. Then create a region called movement. Under this, create a function named acceleration. In this function, we'll add force at a position to the rigid body with the value of acceleration multiplied by move input and then multiplied by transform dot forward. The force position will be at the acceleration point and the force mode will be set to accelerate. Here's a quick breakdown of how this works. The force value is segmented into parts where acceleration determines the magnitude of the force, move input checks whether the user intends to move the car forward or backward, and transform.forward specifies the direction in which we want to apply the force, which is the forward direction of the car, and force mode is set to acceleration because we don't want the force to be dependent on the car's mass. 
Next, create a deceleration function. This would be exactly the same as the acceleration function. Only the magnitude of the vector will be deceleration and its direction on the opposite side of acceleration. Custom deceleration is used because otherwise the car will be moving for a longer time. And to counter that, we could have increased drag, but drag is applied all the time and in all directions, so the car will start to fall slow and also wouldn't move in the sideways direction. Now, make a function movement. In it, check if the car is grounded, then call the accelerate and decelerate functions. Add this function in the fixed update. Now, in the editor, firstly, create an empty game object acceleration point and place this a bit below the car's center point and then drag and drop this into references. If we play the game, it's working perfectly well. If you encounter any bugs or issues, feel free to join our Discord server to get help from fellow developers. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We notice many of you enjoy our videos but haven't subscribed yet. Your simple click really helps motivate us to create even more valuable content. Now, let's add the ability to turn. First, create a float named Steer Strength for controlling the turning intensity. Then create an animation curve called Turning Curve to adjust our turn strength based on the car's current speed. Now, inside the Movement section, create a Turn function. In this function, we're going to add torque to our car's rigid body. The torque amount is calculated by multiplying steer strength, steering input, the evaluated turning curve at our absolute current speed, and the math f dot sign of car velocity ratio, all together with transform dot up to ensure it turns correctly. We'll apply this torque using the acceleration force mode for making it independent of car's mass. Breaking down the torque calculation, steer strength determines how strongly the car turns, the higher the value, the sharper it turns. Steer input checks if the player intends to turn left or right, ranging from minus one to one, where positive values turn the car right and negative values turn it left. The turning curve uses the absolute value of car's velocity ratio to adjust turn power dynamically. As the car's speed changes, the curve evaluates this speed to determine the turning power, and we use the absolute value because our curve only takes positive values. Then we have math f dot sign to get the sign of the car velocity ratio to check if the car is moving forward or backwards so that we can invert the input accordingly. Lastly, transform dot up sets the rotational axis, ensuring the torque is applied vertically allowing the car to pivot correctly on its up axis, and the force mode is set to acceleration, making the torque application independent of the car's mass. This ensures consistent turning behavior regardless of the car's weight. Then, integrate the turn function within the movement function inside the if statement. This is crucial because turning should only happen when the car is grounded. Back in the editor, adjust the steer strength to 15 in the inspector, and then tweak the turning curve. Feel free to craft a curve that suits your project or you can replicate mine. However, you might notice the car continues to turn persistently. To counteract this, increase the angular drag to a higher value, like 10. This adjustment helps manage the car's continuous rotation but also affects its turning power. Consequently, ramp up the steer strength to 30 to compensate. Both these values can be fine-tuned to match your preferences. After these adjustments, you'll see the car handles much better. To address the issue of the car sliding excessively, it's necessary to introduce some side force. This is because, at present, there's nothing countering the car's lateral movement. To tackle this, head over to the script and initiate a new float named Drag Coefficient. Then within the Movement section, introduce a function named Sideways Drag. In this function, first define a float called current sideways speed to capture the car's current sideways velocity, which essentially is the X component of the car's velocity. Following that, create a float named drag force magnitude. This determines the amount of sideways force to apply, counteracting the car's sliding direction. It's negative because the force should act in opposition to the sliding direction. Adjusting the drag coefficient value allows for fine tuning of this force either increasing or decreasing its impact based on the needs. Next, create a vector 3 named drag force, which equals to the drag force magnitude 
multiplied by transform.right. This results in a vector 3 force ready to be applied. Proceed to apply this force to the rigid body at the car's world center of mass. Importantly, this force should act independently of the car's mass, so use force mode.acceleration for the application. Finally, ensure to call this sideways drag function within the movement function under the if statement checking if the car is grounded. Head back to the editor and, in the inspector, set the drag coefficient to 1. Give it a play, and it's working great. That wraps up this part of the tutorial. In the next segment, we'll dive into adding visual elements to the car controller. See you in the next part.